Welcome, welcome back to this playlist, to this series where we use Laravel to gather with Angular 2 and Vue.js. And in this video, we're going to have a look at authentication. Now in the last video, we had a look at the theory behind that. Now we're going to start implementing it on the back end first. And what do we need to be able to authenticate users? Well, we need users, right? Now in the Laravel application, in the app folder, we already got a user file, a user object, a model here by default. And this is the model the Laravel application ships with. Now you can also create your own one. I'm going to use the built-in one and I'll leave the model as it is. This is all I need for now. I also need an entry in the database though. And for this, in the database folder, in the migrations folder, I need a migration file for this user model. Now maybe you already have this file. I deleted it, so I'll recreate it. And for this, I'll go to the console, to the terminal here in the project folder. And I can create a migration file with the artition command line tool and then make colon migration. Give it any fitting name like create user table, something like this. And with this, you see a new file was added here. I can now copy my schema create function from the quotes migration file, add it here and name this table users. The naming is important. It should be users so that Laravel actually is able to find this table when it is looking for the table for the user model because the table name is always lowercase plural form of the model name. So looking for users and there, what should we have? We should have the ID field increments, also, so incrementing. We should have a timestamps or we should have the timestamps, I should say. And we also want to have a string field, so a text field, a short text field, holding the name of the user. You can see this here in the user model. We have name, email, and password by default, though, of course, you can change this. You can adjust this to your needs. Now, besides the name, I also want to have a string field, a text field, which holds the email. And this should be unique, so I'll chain the unique method. And then I also want to have this remember me token, which we're not going to use. But if we don't add it here, well, our app is going to break. So let's simply add remember token for now. And with that, we got everything we need besides the password, right? So let's duplicate this string field here once again, add the password. Of course, this should not be unique because, well, no reason to make it unique would probably not lead to the desired behavior of our app. And with that, we got everything we need. Important thing here about the password field, don't restrict it. Don't restrict the amount of characters it can hold because we're going to hash it later. We're going to store the hashed value and the hash will be longer than the actual password. So don't restrict it. Or if you absolutely need to restrict it, it should at least be able to hold 60 characters. So with this setup here, we can also add the function for the down phase here, here. If we roll back migrations, so here we simply drop the user's table. And this again is if we roll back our migrations, then this removes the table. So with that, the migration file is created. Now back in the terminal, we can run php artition migrate to run those migrations. Now, chances are that for you, you already had a quotes table. I removed it before I started recording this video, so it ran both migrations. It definitely should run the users table migration. With that being run, we can go back to the app. And here in the app folder under HTTP, in the controllers folder, I want to create a new controller. Now, we could also use the artisan command line tool for that, but I think it's worth practicing this from time to time by doing it manually. And there, I'll create a new file. I'll name it usercontroller.php. Now you could use the built-in off controllers, but we're going to use a different way of authenticating users later. So I think it's a good idea to create your own controller. Now I'm going to copy the start of my quote controller because it's equal or relatively equal. I can remove the quote import. And of course I should rename it to user controller. That's important. And with that, I want to start by adding one simple method, a public function named sign up which allows me to sign a user up, to create a user. Here, I first want to validate the input. For this, I need to get access to the request. So I'm going to inject this. Why This is why I added the import at the top, inject the request. And then with this validate, we can validate the request against our set of rules here. So for example, that the name should be required, that the email address here should be required and should also be an email and it should be unique unique 
in the user's table. This is how unique works. You pass an argument by adding a colon and the argument is the table name you want to check the field here. And this will be the column name it will look for. So here for this validator, it will check if in the user's table we have an email column and if in this column we're already using this email address. With this we're making sure that we're not trying to store an email address which is already taken. Oops. Now with that I also want to validate the password of course. So password should be required. And you could also add a minimum length for something like this. I'll leave it like this. And now you might wonder how does validation here work? Because we're kind of sending the request differently. We're not sending a request as we do in a normal Laravel app because we're not using the Laravel views, right? I'll come back to this. With validation in place, if validation succeeded, I want to create a new user using my user model, which I import from app backslash user. And we can use this mass assignment syntax by passing an array as an argument to the constructor to set the name here to request input name, to then also set the email to request input email, and of course to set the password to whoops, request input password, you could think. But we want to encrypt the password, right? Storing it like this, the raw value would be terribly bad. You definitely want to encrypt it and we can use the bcrypt helper method to do so. This will hash our password and store the hash in the database. Important, it's a good practice to not only encrypt it here, but also to have a HTTPS connection, so a secure connection between client and server so that the password is encrypted at all times. So if this were storing the or we're creating the user, let's now store it in the database with the save method. And that's almost all. Now I also want to return a response. In a normal Laravel app, we often return a view. Here I'm returning, uh, well, with the response helper method, I'm returning a JSON response. JSON is this JavaScript object data format. I'll set the status code to 201. This is the second argument of the JSON method. The first argument is an associative array, which kind of is the JavaScript object we sent back. So you can think of these squared brackets getting replaced with curly braces later on. And I want to have a key of, let's say, message and say successfully created user, something like this. Of course, you can fine tune this to your needs. With this in place, we also need to add a route. So in the routes folder, in the API folder, I need to add a new route down there. It should be a post route and it should be slash user, let's say, because we create a new user. And to configure this route with this array, I'll set up the users key and point to my user controller and there the sign up method. This should be all. Let's now go back to Postman to test it. I will later, of course, also show you how to do it in the real Angular front end. But for this, we need to create a sign up form there too. Now I want to just check if it works. So back to Postman, we should enter the URL to our application. For me, this is this URL. Don't forget the slash API at the end and make sure to use your URL slash user then at the end. And this should be a post request because we added such a post route and we send some raw data in the body. And this should be some JSON data. The data I want to send, of course, is the name. And don't forget the double quotes here. We're sending JSON data. So the double quotation marks are important. Name could be Max. We also want to send an email that could be tested. Test.com, whatever you like. And finally, a password. This could be test1. This could be the data we send. But if I hit send now, we see if we click on preview, we see the Laravel starting page. Now what's wrong here? Well, Laravel is not getting that we're sending JSON data. So it's not able to retrieve our data correctly. And therefore it's displaying us the homepage because we're getting redirected back kind of to the homepage with an error, which we don't see because we don't edit code to display it. But we're not able to get our data to the back and this is what's happening. So we need to inform Laravel about which data we're sending. We do this in the headers tab here by setting some headers and we need to set the content type header, oops, content type 
to application slash JSON. This informs Laravel that some JSON data is coming and this allows it to retrieve it correctly. Now, if we hit send again, we get back successfully created user. And if we have a look in our database using SQL Pro here, we see that indeed a user was created here. We see that the password also is hashed. This clearly is not the password we sent there. Now let's try creating another user with the same email address. If you hit send again, well, we see that starting page again. What's going wrong here? Well, we need to set one additional header for validation to work. We need to set the X requested with header and set this to XML HTTP request, which tells Laravel, hey, this is an Ajax request. Now with setting this header here too, if I hit send again, now I get back my error message instead, the email has already been taken. And with that, you see how validation works. It's the exact same validation code you would use in a normal Laravel application with this validate, but it detects that we're setting an Ajax request, that we're sending such an Ajax request, and therefore it sends us back any error messages we might get, any validation errors, as JSON data. So it doesn't send us back the normal homepage. It did before when we didn't set this header, so it didn't know that we sent an Ajax request. But if it does notice, we get back the request as JSON data too, at response, excuse me. So we get back the errors in JSON format. And then we can use them in our application. We will do this later when we hook up everything. But first, let's move on to the next video where we actually sign users in. See you there. Bye.